We are recording. We are not live. Sorry, folks, we're not live because I couldn't get the uh, couldn't get the thing to authenticate. And now I realize I need to log into my soundboard, which is on a ancient Google Pixel Three A XL. Mm-hmm. Sitting here in my hand. There we go. The J and Gary show. A, you're only an A. You're a big A. I'm just an A. Once again, you're a big A. I am a big A. That's what some people say. Let me uh, mm. let me set you up to not be an A. Yeah, you're, that'll be tough. You're on the network. You're the J Pierce. Boom. There you are. The content of this meeting is being <laughs> sent to a third party. Yes. Got it. Now, slide over a little bit, because the other way, your other left, as, do you, do you have your uh, your daylight light on, or do you have your old yellow light on? Mm-hmm. Daylight lights. Because you're looking pretty, looking pretty yellow to me. There's the light you want. Okay. Is that better? A uh, yeah, I mean you're still warmer than me, but I am a warm guy. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's everybody that's knows that. I'm pretty chilly. I decided that even though multiple yeah, people have have told me that this shot is creepy, it is creepy. I don't care. I like it better. The other shot is sterile. Sterile, Daryl. Yes. You just like it because you're Jeepy and it's creepy. Creepy was our uh, yeah. brother's nickname. Yeah. In the day. Is that working better? It, yeah, the light is in the shot and it's. Well, you know what? <laughs> Let me do this. Working on it. I was a theatrical lighting designer. <laughs> that's true. You have talents here. How's that? Uh, that's good. You're You're bright, but then you are bright. I'll just wear the lampshade now. <laughs> party, <laughs> party. Never done this before. All right. Yeah, and I make a mess of this place doing this this podcast. Okay, so you got that. So hold on, hold on. I got I got tools here. I've got two. How is how's that? Is that That's, color balance back, coming better? Back to being a little warm, but. Oh man. Okay, hold on. And Jay did want me to start recording this. Before we figured this all out, because okay, we, well that's how I'm going to be. I'm just going to be like this. That's not bad. We're building this airplane as we're flying it. That's the so deal. If the audio is okay. I don't need my headphones because I can't figure out how to make the audio go through my headphones. Now, yesterday, well, I, I set up my new little mixer and um, it, it was working all the way around, and I was hearing it out of my headphones, the audio coming back, and all that stuff. But now it's not. So, well, did, did you did you test it with a Zoom call? No. So what you oh. need, what you probably need to do, is go, go to your Zoom settings. Oh, not this again! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute! I just realized I was only looking at the preview channel. Everybody watching the playback was only seeing still the big A. <laughs> Oh, until I just I pushed the button. I, I, I'd okay. only been monitoring the the uh, the preview mm-hmm. channel for those who understand television terminology, and Audio I had not, had not switched you on. Yeah, you want to f- make sure that Zoom is feeding oh. that mixer as your speakers. Now, and now, and can you hear? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Cool. Okay, you you are the lighting guy, but I am the audio genius. Well, I'm an audio genius too. I built a whole damn radio station. <laughs> well, yes, but you but you had yet to really understand the ins and outs of Zoom audio settings. It sounded damn good. Yeah. Am I over far enough? Do I need to be over far? Uh, you're you're okay. What you need to do now no. is, is what are you looking at to see me? Uh, PC, laptop. A laptop. Okay. You need to put, 
push the laptop off to your right so that your head, the, the other right, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, uh -huh. the, the, the whole idea is you want to be looking vaguely in my direction as opposed to looking off screen like that. Hang on. Just hold it. I'm going to get this. <laughs> you wouldn't believe all the crap that's on my desk. I would believe it. Okay. Uh, I need like a four by eight sheet of plywood up here on sawhorses for a desk. Okay. Now we got to do this. I actually changed the position of my camera a little bit, which I never touch. So that I could be over here on this side without being way too far away from all the controls. So how's that? I think we're pretty good. It's okay. Pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Martin? That means it's time to be, for me to push this button. To push... <laughs> How about that? How about that? <laughs> Is that a stag? Checking to see my live performance audio was on so that you could actually hear the music. You heard the music, right? I did hear the music. Could you tell the difference between that and what I had played last time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> In other words, <laughs> I need to play it so you can rem remember. That was the original. That's the original um, AI mm -hmm. uh, artificial intelligence created jingle. This is the human enhanced version. It's a little less baby fundy voice. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 and we're not speaking in it because, uh, as I've learned, and I've I've done a lot of investigating in this and researching and learning, and it would be very disrespectful to some people who suffer greatly because of the indoctrination into that whole rigmarole um, within the fundamentalist Christian church. And there's a lot of PTSD and some other things that uh, come from it. So I'm not going to do it. That would be a disrespect. So, so your point is that, that, well, first of all, we haven't explained what it is. And, and I, I know a lot of people already know what it is. Katie Britt gave the Republican response to the State of the Union and spoke in what is loosely known as the baby fundy voice, and um, which I guess would stand for young baby fundamentalists um and it's used uh, primarily in churches and it's that quiet talk everything's okay you're gonna be okay everything's fine just do think, what i say I everything's think, good I think, I think i can play this without getting taken down or anything you see the ccp knows that if it conquers the minds of our next generation it conquers America. So breathless, and and at the same time, it's Stepford wifeish, and yeah. she's in the kitchen. Why isn't she in her Senate <laughs> office? She was like the first woman elected to the Senate from Alabama, a very important um, person, senator. Yeah. This um, this is, this is she what she, this is what she normally office. sounds like. Yeah, and this is well before that that uh, yeah. previous recording, which was the Republican rebuttal to the State of the Union. Right. Uh, Senator Graham, thank you for hosting this. Thank you for continuing to bring attention to this. And thank you to all the gentlemen behind me who continue to work diligently to actually secure our border. Yeah, so that's what she very, sounds like. Very believable, very natural. I, I could, you know, uh, well, I mean, topic matter would differ, but um, very relatable to me. Yeah. Now, now, I had, had before you brought it up to me, I had never heard the term baby fundy voice. Oh, yeah, it's a big thing. It's a huge thing. It's uh, an indoctrination. It's like, um, oh, what's the fundy thing? being fundamentalist. Yes. I think you just explained that, but yes, fundamentalist. And, and they, they listen to how uh, pastors, uh, fundamentalist pastors speak. And it's all this. Um, 
You know, it brings up the whole women should be in the house, should be subservient. That's why she's in the kitchen. I mean, for God's sake, this was so transparent and so obvious. Republicans that were behind this, and a lot of them have come out and gone, yeah, that was that was not good. But, you know, <laughs> that, 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 for her, that for her is an unfortunate still frame with the eyes closed yeah. and stuff. But Well, and, and others who, you know, helped stage it. And the talking points, they sent talking points out saying, um, here's the suggested response to uh, her speech. It was great. It was, wow. It was just, uh, and, and, you know, the, the fact that they have to give people talking points to respond to it. Oh, my God. Oh my God! Where where has that part of the Republican Party gone, and where are the others that aren't standing up and just going, you know, that's not us. Here's us, but they're not doing it. Although um, some stood up in the TikTok vote, I I don't get the TikTok thing, but I don't want to segue into that yet because I'm just you know it's this whole thing, and then and, and while we're on the topic of it, before we get to TikTok. Who? Because you lived in North Carolina, yeah, and I live in who's South this, Carolina now. Which is who's even, this moral woman that's running for state school superintendent? Oh, you I thought you were going to talk about uh, the guy running for governor. No, because he's a total whack job. The Republican candidate. Well, this woman's a whack job in social media. Um, prior, not during this campaign, but she has talked about. Uh, the execution of uh, Barack Obama and um, uh, the Clintons. And, you know, it, it's like, what is, who is this person? <laughs> and she could be running the schools in North Carolina. And she's a, a, just the stuff she espouses is just batshit crazy. Yeah. I've paid no How attention to she, that because I don't live in North Carolina anymore. Yeah, well, but, but Mark Robinson, the, the lieutenant governor currently and running for governor, has also it, it has expressed tons of extreme. I mean, every, everybody you want to paint your opponent as being extreme. That's just kind of table stakes mm -hmm. these days in politics. But he is whack, whacked out far right, batshit extreme. And plenty of did, plenty, plenty of evidence, video evidence of, of him standing up in front of groups expressing that where, kind of stuff. Where does this find support? Who's who's supporting this? Well, because as as you know, in politics, I'm sure that as you know in politics, during the primary season, you have to run to the polls. You have to run to the extremes in order to get nominated. And then, in theory, for the general election, you try to backpedal and go back toward the center someplace, although that that part of the theory has been kind of collapsing lately. Yeah, because we have recordings and people pull them out. and Yeah, well, we have recordings for a long time. Nobody sure. cares. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to stick with the um, baby fundy voice for a while. Oh, baby fundy voice. Okay. Yeah, because it's it's, again, I, I had not heard it. it it's not, oh, yeah. not a new concept. P and you hear people speak like that. Some people, yeah, well, uh, who have been indoctrinated into it, and there people go to group therapy and go to therapists to to get out of it and stop it. It's like the, um, and, and, but as, oh, in, in that yeah. case, it is just it is one aspect of of fun, cult fundamentalism. Yeah, it is. Which it's people funny. go to therapy to get out of. Yeah, it's like that. Um, well, it's, it's Scientology. One version, yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. People get people get uh, hooked into it, and um, yes, as you said, have to go through therapy to get out. And um, th because there's something, there's some need that it fills. There's some, I don't know, a childhood trauma that sends them to the comfort of it. I don't know what it is. I was never, and I don't think you were ever drawn into it. Uh, I think I went to church twice. <laughs> so. <laughs> once, the, once. the family went to church regularly mm. up until I was maybe 10 maybe, and maybe younger than that. And, and we stopped. I think we were, let's see. Grandpa, the Nazi was a Lutheran pastor. Lutheran, Lutheran ministry. Yeah. Is that where we went to Lutheran church? No, we went to a Presbyterian church. Well, I don't remember that at all. 
I seriously yeah. don't. And, and I, um, Maybe that's what I blacked out of, actually. <laughs> well, you, you might have been too young to... Although you have you have memories you have memories of, of actually I mean, going through the birth canal, I think. I mean, if I was four or five, I should have remembered it. You know, I do, I do. I remember once. I remember once being in in uh, church, and I I think I was laying down on a pew while we were in church. I think that was it. I have some kind of a memory of that, but that's yeah. it. And then the next time was after my first marriage went to the baptist church well it was actually after um dale was born did you get married in a church yeah we got married in that church and then we started <laughs> yes we got married in the, the baptist the first first baptist church in carterville illinois that's right yeah Bye. and then i got married in a Methodist Church, the second time, <laughs> the third time I got married in a bed and breakfast. And this one's held for 20 years. As, as we hear, so, so there's something to be said for, for doing that. My best friend and, Margie performed the uh, ceremony. And then I performed the ceremony for her and Wade, and they're still married. I was just going to say, you, you couldn't have performed the ceremony for yourself? You couldn't marry yourself, so to speak? I could have, I suppose. I am ordained. <laughs> I'm not sure it works that way. So the uh, the um, first memory I have of, but not, the memory I have of church was not, not very strong, but it was like we had Sunday school before the main sermon. Did you go to Sunday school? Yeah, we went to Sunday school. And it, I mean, it irritated me because I went to regular school for five days. Didn't want to go to another day of school. And then the main sermon. You didn't even want to go to five days. So I don't know if it was Andy and I who staged a protest. We would have been pretty young to be staging a protest. But for some reason, family just stopped going. I would love to explore our religious roots and current status. But that would be taking, <clears throat> that's a podcast length show. And it's oh, yeah, taking we'll us another. off the rails so far. So we'll do that another time. But we're just talking. That, I think the baby fundy voice thing was a way of saying that people um, can be controlled and manipulated. Look at oh, yeah, uh, big time. The Reverend Jim Jones. Look at Jimmy Swaggart. Look at uh, <laughs> look at who's Trump's the Republican who, cult. Who, well, I didn't say on, that. on a huge scale. Who was the one that was going to jump off the tower? Uh, if they didn't get money, um, not ringing a bell. Yeah. I'll think of it. Oral Roberts. And, um, that would be you a know, big these people and uh, Elmer Gantry, Burt Lancaster in the movie. Um, but it is, I mean, it goes back to, you know, um, a lot of it, not all of it, a lot of it. And some people need it. Some people need the structure. Some people need the, um, the social context of church. Some people need the explanation uh, of where we came from. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't really worry about it. We're here. Make the best of it. Not worried about letting somebody else take care. Uh, I'll control my life. Thank you. I'm a libertarian when it comes to that, I guess. But um, the long and the short of it is that... You say that a lot, by the way. Pe people who want... That's your, that's your, that's your go-to phrase. What? I'm a libertarian? No, the long and the short of it. Oh, the long and the short of it. I listened to one of the previous shows. You said it about 40 times. Did I really? Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> the uh, my wife can't stand it when I say whatever. So whatever. whatever. She says I say that a lot. <laughs> so. Did, what I, I'm, did I derail you? You know what I'm getting at. I'm just getting at some people are open to people who have not the best intent for them. They have it for themselves, but not them, not yeah. the person yeah. looking for uh, whatever is, it is. For. is. Is every charismatic leader based group of people got an evil background? Um, Every charismatic based leaders followers, you, you mean are all of the charismatic are leaders are, evil? The, are they evil? Yeah, do they have an, an evil 
Is, is that a, 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 a Venn di diagram create a single circle? No, I don't think so. I think there are some who are uh, very above board and out there to help people yeah. and, and but, are very helpful. But they still have their followers in a cult-like grip. I, I suppose, you know... Um, we don't hear about them because they're more benign. We only hear about the, the really bad ones. I mean, you could you could say there are things, you know, like Tony Robbins. Let's talk Tony Robbins. You know who Tony Robbins is? I've heard the name. So, so Tony, Tony Robbins, Robbins is a motivational person, and you pay money to go to take his courses, and you pay money to go to, I don't know if she's got Tony Robbins University or something, but you go to you go to these weekend things and rallies and et cetera, et cetera. Was he involved in the est thing? In the what? Est, E-S-T. Uh, I'm trying to think of what that is. Why don't I know that? It's, it's a, a personal growth motivational thing. Oh, I don't know. I went to that back in the, uh, in the early eighties. It was, it, it was a mind warping grab you. Folk, focus well, that's you kind, of thing, a, kind of, that's, that's what it is. It's a, it's a thing. And you know, my, I didn't have to go through a, a uh, decompression to get out of it, but, but while I was in no. the middle of it, it was, it was, you know, quite, uh, yeah, it, 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 it took your mind. And yeah, and Tony Robbins can too. It's, it's very personal growth, personal achievement. It goes through everything from what you should be eating to exercise, to sleep. It's a whole lifestyle thing. And some people are in it forever. They, they need to be in it forever. I went to a weekend and, um, the reason being I was at a very low point in my life, and believe it or not, I was not um, <laughs> I was not able to be as sure of myself and putting myself out there. We have, we have both been there. Yeah, and um, so I, it yes, was. I, I know it's hard to tell now. <laughs> we, we seem so incredibly self assured. It was hard. It was a very hard time in my life, and um, I was in a. A job where I didn't think I was ever going to do any better, you know, and it wasn't bad. Was this Terrell, Terrell, Texas time? No, 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 no. I was <laughs> Carbondale. Oh, was, okay. So, marriage wasn't going really well. I mean, well. Terrell was a bad time, but. Well, that was a terrible time, but, uh, you know, uh, I always felt like there was light at the end of the tunnel. I was kind of getting into the, when is this ever going to end? you know, type of thing. And I'd been to group therapy and individual therapy and then back to adult children of alcoholics and all of this stuff, just trying to figure out what the hell uh, it was going to take to get out of this, to get out of this slump. I'll just call it a slump. So I went to this Tony Robbins weekend at my wife at the time's um, suggestion. Uh, she was a big Tony Robbins fan and follower, and she'd gone to some stuff. And she even went to the thing in, Fiji, where you, where they swing like a trapeze at you and you jump off a pole and grab it and swing it off a bit. I've, I've done that, but I'll, it's another story. <laughs> what, really? It was, so it was, what I, long and short of it, what I got out of the weekend was learning to walk on. He said it again. Long and short it, of it. Long and short of it was to. Um, we should make a drinking game out of that. <laughs> we could. Um, I came away from it knowing how to walk on fire and, and okay. Yeah. There, there, there was there, Tony Robbins fire walk with me. Now I got it. That's it. And I did that. And it's all about getting over the fear of walking on fire, even though, you know, the physics behind it and you know, your feet aren't going to get burned. Not literally it's, fire, just hot coals, red hot coals. Well, it was red hot coals because they start the pile of wood on fire and you go out like every 20 minutes and check how the fire is going. And then when the coals are just right, they, uh, you go and you do it. And you uh, do it. If I recall correctly, you do it quickly. You don't linger. Um, not, well, you don't linger, but you also don't go very quickly. What you want to do is you want to do it. Um, well, first of all, you're on a little patch of wet grass that they put down and that forms the, um, uh, well, you need, your feet need to be wet, the moisture that needs to be there. And, um, and then you just walk at a steady pace, not running, not, 
lollygagging, trying to make it even so that you're not digging your feet in uh, or anything like that. Um, and so what happens is the um, the wetness, the moisture on your feet, and the hot when it hits the hot coals forms a like a steam barrier that protects your foot. It's the same kind of a thing if you have like molten steel in a little pot and you wet your finger, you can dip it in and take it out. You're not going to burn your finger off. So I'm not going to try that. Take your word for point, it. The point of it is you can know everything about the physics of it, but you know, still, can you do it? Can you, can you stand there in front of this white hot bed of coals that's about 20 feet long and step off into it and walk across it? What's it take to get in state, as they call it, to be able to do that? Part of what you learn is you learn your move, and it's like your mantra in uh, Transcendental Meditation. You're not really supposed to ever tell anybody what it is. But um, I have my move. It's a physical move. And when I find myself getting into a a situation that's, that's, that's making me anxious and hesitant to maybe step my foot out and do something like going and asking somebody for a hundred thousand dollars to support a project I'm doing. Um, so I can do my move. I can just do my move. And you know what? It puts me in state. And once you're in state, (laughs) you're not afraid. And so it still works. So, so so you were at a low point when you did this, Is, is this, a uh, the inflection point that turned you around yeah it is it it really got me going um and it um everything went good from there um my career has been great even when i got let go from my last job, not my last <laughs> job the job before my final job on a full-time job um you know i i i weirdly well i used my move and I applied for another job and, you know, the whole story. But, um, you know, at the age of 50, well, how old was I? 57? Yeah, when you're supposed to be unemployable. What was your yeah. move? What is your move? I can't. That's can't personal. Be my mantra either. No. Okay. Because no, if, you, if you divulge it, it will stop working. Well, that's what they say. And I just respect that. I'm not going to chance it. I don't believe it, but. You know, whatever. <laughs> I'm in the cult of transcendental meditation. I'm in the, the, the cult of the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And I have been since 1975. I've been meditating yeah. since 1975. There was a, another cult you were in that I vaguely recall. The cult that I was, I was in the hearing just a little bit about. Yeah, you were getting into a uh, pyramid scheme of some kind, and you were convinced that you were going to get m- massive riches. <laughs> Amway. That was I didn't know which one it was. Amway is, of course, a big one. It was Amway. Yeah. But my dream was not good enough for Amway. I just wanted to drive a white station wagon with the Amway logo on it and deliver um, products to people, sell stuff to people. And you That's know, not what it's all about. It's not what it's all about. No, you don't sell things and make money. You you make money by recruiting people to recruit people to recruit people to recruit people to recruit people. And finally, when you get enough get layers, way up the top of the pyramid, a few dollars pass up from each one. But you know what? After the first meeting, the recruiting meeting we had, I felt so dirty. I didn't want to ever touch it again. So you just quit. Yeah. And uh, because, you know, you're supposed to invite people to the meeting, but not tell them what it's about. I have got something that's going <laughs> to change your life. And um, the first thing people said to me was, it's Amway, isn't it? <laughs> you admit it. You go like, no, you got to come to this meeting and see, man. I, I got to tell you. Yeah, you don't, you don't have the salesman gene. It was just bad. It was bad. I had a picture of a Cadillac on my refrigerator door. You know, How long did it last? No. Oh. Well, actually, to, because the, there is product involved in it, and you're supposed to sell product, too, and do this stuff and get other which, people. Which, to for a lot of people, ends up filling their garage. So, um, 
I think it was until we gave away or personally used all of the shipment. And then, then it was over. And when it was over, I mean, it just wasn't over. So what, was I, what I vaguely remember, it was uh, one of those times when we were actually in touch with each other. And I tried to recruit <clears> you. Yeah. Eh, I did? I, I don't think you tried to recruit me. You were telling me about it. And I'm going, oh, <laughs> oh, Jay. And I don't think I was in one of my most stable positions either at that point. But So I, I speak from personal experience when I tell you how easy it is for people to fall into cults. Yeah. I fell into the Amway cult. But I didn't fall into the Tony, uh, what, well, if you call it a cult, the Tony Robbins thing. But I did take away from it what I needed at the time. And um, it has worked for me. It's It's been very good. And I can tell people in job interviews or other settings, you know, I've walked on fire. This doesn't scare me. You don't scare me. <laughs> Donald Trump doesn't scare me. I've walked on fire. You walked on fire. Oh, spur. So, uh, yeah, I, I did the S thing. Yeah, what was it, your thing? It, yeah. I think, if I recall, it was, it was, it was like two weeks worth. Not just um, a weekend. Not trapezes? No, uh, no, that's something different. Not, that, that was real brief. That was um, a weekend... I forget what they called it, outward bound or something. Um, outward bound may be something totally different. Oh, it was Pete. No, it was at a um, at a, uh, a a camp, and they had a series of physical things to do to challenge you mm. uh, to build confidence. Sounds um, like a reality show. It, one of them was a zip line. Well, the first zip line I saw. Mm -hmm. One of them was a um, trust fall. You stand on a platform and you fall mm. backwards into a group of people who are going to catch you. And what, of course, what everybody does is they fall backwards and they form their body into a V going down butt first. So and you you're supposed it. to not want to do that. And I remember what I did is I did a you know, swan dive back into everybody. That's so what you're supposed to. Yeah. The zip line was no problem. Um, th there was another, uh, like a tightrope thing, although tightrope with with uh rails on both sides wires every, nothing was stable but you walk across it for 20 yeah. or 30 feet and then the last thing you climb up onto a platform about 20 feet high and there is a trapeze it's it's a stationary trapeze you're not flying it at you and you're supposed to dr jump out to catch the trapeze you're wearing a harness and um yeah. With a, yeah, with, with a cable. So if, if you miss the trapeze, yeah. you're going to fall a yeah. couple of feet and then the harness catches you and lets you down. Uh, the trapeze doesn't get lowered at any point. Sooner or later, you're going to use the harness to get back to the ground. Okay. And, the, and uh, Cindy was with me on this. Um, Cindy did great on almost everything. But of this group of 10, 15 people maybe, um, I went last, I think. Nobody made it to the trapeze. Until I did, Ooh. and I, you know, I, and I just jumped out there. It was it was not that far. Now I'm taller than most of the other people by a few inches, but that's not going to make the difference. No, that's awesome. And I, you know, I just jumped out there and grabbed it, and I did it a second time, just because it was so cool. But I was the only person that did that, which was seemed odd to me. Everybody else got through those things. I am not the world's most confident person. I'm a party vegetable. I don't want, I don't like being around a lot of people unless I've got a part to play. You know, I'm, I'm great as the leader of a group. I'm terrible as a, as just a group member. Really? Um, I mean, sitting and listening to somebody else do their thing. That's fine. I can do that, but it's okay. Let's break up into small groups and start working on a problem or just, even that is, is not so bad because there's a there's some direction to it. Mm -hmm. But if it's just sit and sit, turn turn to your neighbor on the right and, and have some conversation for a minute. No, mm -hmm. don't, don't ask me to do that. That's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, like, I got a problem with like that. Like this, like this. I don't really want to talk to you. <laughs> I got no problem with that. I, I, once I turn this far, I, I can't see the monitor that's got both of us on there. No, so I can't see us either. Can't tell but I, what's going on. That pro this probably <laughs> looks like better, more like that's, that's what, what what the people who said that this was creepy were talking about. That we weren't looking at each other. 
But if you look at, at people on TV sitting at a desk, uh, your news anchors and stuff, they don't typically look right at each other. They'll, How's this? Is this better? Well, it, it is except for your eyes because your eyes are still looking off. I'll just close my eyes. Uh, okay, that's creepy. So, so anyway, Fundy Baby Voice. Um, <laughs> ooh, good job. Don't do that. They're going to stay that way. For the audio audience, Jay has leaned his face deeply into the camera and is moving his eyeballs independently of each other, left and right, randomly. Which has got to give you a, a, both a headache and a very bizarre no. field of vision. What are you drinking? Stag? Water. No. Wouldn't be drinking if we're doing a show. It's, um, I don't know. But I, I have my public radio in mid-America cozy, or koozie, that's pronounced both ways, for the 2015 convention, when I was heavily into stuff like that. Pu public radio? Yeah. On the NPR board and stuff? Yeah, so, and there's public radio in mid-America is what they call one of the um, regionals. There's, I think, seven of us around the country. So ours goes from... Minneapolis to um, New Orleans and the heartland. We, we used to fly meet over country. We used to meet, yeah. We used to meet twice a year, once in New Orleans, and it was always you great. love New Orleans. You're a big New Orleans fan. So I love, love me some. Someday we got to go. Oh yeah. Someday we you can show me the town. But before oh. we leave public radio, let me show you. But I found it's. Oh. Morning edition shirt. Let me uh, even better, even better. Let me uh, let me show you on the on the on the little camera. Wow, this camera's whacked out. That's like the uh, David Letterman uh, head cam. Wonk, Wonk ninety one point five FM. Yeah, but look at the name in the middle of it. Bob Edwards. Yeah, with Bob. Edwards. Bob is a great guy. It's hard to do. Did you ever meet him in person? Yes. I had a bourbon with him once in the uh, lobby of the Peabody Hotel, and we watched the Ducks do their parade. Just you and him? Yeah. Well, there were other people at the bar, but yes, he and I. <clears throat> it was, it was you, you two were on a date, <laughs> so to speak. Well, he happened to be at the bar, and I walked up, and I said, Bob Edwards, I'm Jay Pierce. And he said, who? Sat down, and this would have been a long time ago, too. I was at WILL then. It was a long time ago. Uh, no, he, he said. Was cordial. You're the one who wakes up central Illinois. <laughs> he was very cordial, uh, very nice. Because it probably uh, happened to him a lot. And I asked him what he was drinking. He goes, a very fine bourbon. He said what it is, and he highly recommended it. So I got one. And we watched the ducks and noted how we liked the ducks. And then we had to go up to the roof because it was time for the uh, car talk guys pool party. One of them ended up in the pool. I can't remember which one. <laughs> but they had. Okay, uh, so you met those guys too. Yeah. Tom and Ray. And they had uh, kegs of Heineken. Public radio doesn't do it second class, man. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> we, we know how to take your contributions and. No, I was going <clears> to say no. Average parties. No, no donor months. On this, but it was um, uh, it was a great party, and yeah, and I can't remember which one. I think Ray ended up in the pool. Ray was the Ray's the one who's still around. I would have liked to have been a fly on the wall in the meeting, the NPR brass meeting, where this show was pitched to them to become an NPR show. Did they start that as a local show somewhere? Was it in Boston? Yeah, it was. It was a local, local show, show in Boston, Boston. And, and then it became a segment on morning, uh, Sunday, weekend edition Sunday with Susan Stanberg, and from there it became a nationally uh, syndicated. Show. Okay, so they they wormed their way into NPR on little cat feet. Yeah, because the show was so different from everything else NPR at the mm -hmm. time that 
It there, was. there must have been people because there's these people in every organization. There's these, there are people that they Pure. just, they have no vision and they can't see anything. They're, they are too conservative and they can't see anything different. For and example, you know this video frame that people said was creepy. It is creepy. It's wonderful. It's brilliant. It's genius. We'll, we'll agree to disagree. <laughs> I'm going to remind me to get back to that too. Um, so, but, how, so the question is so, how, how did that show get, how did that show get, get, um, get past those people that said, this is not NPR. This is not who we are. Uh, you know what? I probably know, but can't remember exactly how it happened. You were, well, you weren't there at the time. Uh, no, wasn't at NPR, but, um, I think it was Probably because they were a young and creative bunch back then. I mean, look at all things considered. It didn't sound like any news program on the air. But I think that, you know, once Car Talk got on anyway, there were still those at stations that were like, I can't believe we're running this. And they go, <laughs> you know, it's got more listeners and it raises more money than whatever it is you're doing around here. So, sorry, I never spoke like that as a boss. Look what I got. Hold on. Speaking of shirts. Wait, I'm going to get half naked here for a second. Just tolerate it. I'm I got, almost, my, I got my finger on the button. I don't look like I did back in the day. Anyway. Jeez. Okay. I'm not really bad. I'm not covered in going. something. I don't have hair don't, everywhere. I don't have hair anywhere. Hair's okay. And and don't oh. start complaining about tattoos because tattoos are a thing these days. Uh, I guess I got to stand up or something. Hold on. I'm going to give you uh, I'm going to give you full screen. <laughs> yep. Where's your aviators? Yeah. Jay, for the audio audience, Wait, I can't describe hear you. your t-shirt. Oh, Jay can't hear me. Jay his first of all, Jay got naked from the navel up. Okay, and, so for and, the yeah. and then second, he put on a t-shirt. Oh yeah. With a uh, cartoon picture of Joe Biden, not not cartoon, but a drawing caricature. Of Joe, caricature. Well, not, not even, just I mean a, a normal drawing that says, "I may be old, but you. I get shit done." Yeah, and that's my motto too. Maybe old, but I get shit done. I do. I was uh, prior to push this, you back or, over to the side. We're babysitting uh, the other side. My granddaughter. Farther. Yeah, you're too close. That's what's creepy. You're too close. Okay, how's that? Yeah, so. Farther, farther. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll I'll get over here. <laughs> there you go. That worked. Yeah. So, so the story being, of the shirt. Oh, so we were out in the yard today, picking up sticks and moving branches and stuff, and getting ready to make the yard a play place again for the kids, and um. What else to do today? I mean, did a, did a whole bunch of stuff. I'm a big, strong man. That's what my wife calls me. A big, strong man. Yep. Without, without having any kids. You've got kids at, at the labor level of age. The labor level of age. Yeah. You can start with kids that are too young to actually do anything. But your kids are, are young and uh, uh, you know, middle, early, late young adult. They're not middle aged yet. They're oh, young, kid, young adults. Yeah, yeah. They're they can they can accomplish things. Yeah, yeah. They're thirty. Well, they'll be thirty and forty this yeah, year. Yeah, I don't have kids like that. No. And so, when we went on family vacations, there was Cindy and me, and her parents. Mm -hmm. And her parents at the time, you know, I was in my early sixties, and they were in their early eighties. And so the the mid the early to mid sixty year old guy was the one who did all the physical labor, carrying mm -hmm. luggage up and down, oh, yeah, <laughs> because yeah, I we that. didn't. I didn't have any twenty five year olds to do it. Yeah, I guess if we ever took a family vacation like that, that could happen. The, but no, I mean it's yeah. I mean we you know we travel. I do all that, and um, which kind of leads to the well, that was a hell of a vacation. I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> nice to get home, but. I do it out of pleasure. You know, I mean, my wife's paraplegic. That's not a secret. So we got to pack everything we need uh, in um, 
suitcases, blankets, pillows, wheelchairs, and all that. She's not climbing any ladders. No. And then I got to, you know, load her into the car and everything and do that. And I do that happily. And that's why I keep in shape. That's why I'm a big, strong man. That's why I do my stuff. Because, um, you know, I want to be able to help her. She doesn't need a lot of help. She's pretty independent, pretty strong. Pretty sure that she could punch me out if she... <laughs> Because, uh, you know, rolling around in a wheelchair develops a lot of upper body. Um, but um, thankfully, we're getting along. <laughs> so I don't have to worry. <laughs> but, I mean, that's it. She's been a paraplegic. Does, is, does she watch? She can't be watching live right now because I couldn't figure out the live thing. I couldn't make it work. She's. Uh, but she'll watch it as soon as I upload it, right? She's watching Margo right now. So um, let me see. Since she was 16. 46, 46 years, 46 years, 62 years old. That's pretty 16 is is how she old she was when the accident happened. Yeah. So, and she's 62 now. So that's 46 years. That's a long time for a paraplegic. So we count it like paraplegic years, like dog years, but it's not, you know, seven to one or whatever, but she's probably supposed to be about 90. You don't see a lot of, Long-time paraplegics reach her age, and she's in great shape. She takes wonderful care of herself. A lot of people would, uh, you know, it, it'd be easy to not take care of yourself, but she gets up every day, takes a shower, gets dressed, does her whole routine, makeup, whole nine yards, and um, it just keeps going. And we do stuff. We go out to stuff and... We follow Willie Nelson around whenever we can. <laughs> you know, things like that. Um, He's yeah. an inspiration. 115 years old and still up there saying. <laughs> oh, I know. <clears throat> it's the weed. Yeah. It's the <clears throat> Snoop Dogg lived to 150. So, um, Should we start the show now? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. We haven't even started, started the show. show. Trying to, I'm trying to, find, trying to find the show. Oh, I thought you mm-hmm. played the... Ladies and gentlemen... From the studio in the bonus room above the garage on the north side of Fort Mill, South Carolina, the shadow of Charlotte, the buckle of the Bible Belt, and the foot of Mount Belzoni, and the attic in the town next to the <laughs> Trying to make this up on the fly. Face of Hell 9000. I stepped on you and you went away. You, you must have um, your echo cancellation left on. Echo cancellation. Another Zoom setting. You need to turn off echo cancellation. You don't want to be canceled by an echo. I got live performance audio off. Oh, you want that on? Live performance. If you turned it on, turned I, it on I, I, can't I can't hear you. Hear you. And now, you, now, you're, now you're feeding, feeding me, back me back to me. To me. Live performance audio is on. Okay, let's see if that's working. Zoom audio is Testing, noise. testing, testing. Can you hear me? I'm, deli- I'm deliberately trying to talk on top of you because oh, you can't hear when you. When you yeah, talk? Well, I don't. I want to see if I'm if I'm no longer going to be dropping you out when I'm talking. Oh, so so count to ten. One, two, test, three, test, four, test, four, test. Five, and I'm six, still dropping seven, you out a little nine, bit, but not ten. so bad. What are you doing? Z- Zoom can be set so that so that it, when one person talks, the other person gets cut out, oh. or it can be set so that doesn't happen. It's what and, they call it echo cancellation. So where do we go and do that? Deep in the deep in the audio settings. I muted myself trying to get <laughs> desk speaker microphone, leave computer audio, audio settings. Audio settings. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, mostly when you turn on the live performance thing, it turns the rest of that stuff off, but you still have some some granular control in there. Live performance audio. Original sound, zoom background noise removal. Yeah, you don't, you don't want it to remove any noise. Automatically adjust microphone volume. Is that mm-hmm. it? You may need that. Um, I may need that. Well, set your audio device. Actually, it would be better if you don't because you have good microphone technique. Okay, you don't so wander all over the place away from your microphone like so a co-host of another then? show I do does. Is this better then? Prob- um, probably. Okay. Once, once again, I, I can only tell if I'm talking and you try to talk, and if I look at cause this. you to mute. 
oh, you you fuzz the background. Yeah. Even I better, because the background is useless. You could put in a different background for us. Uh, avatars. No, I don't want an avatar. Fascinating to the audio audience. Virtual backgrounds. Well, it just got blur. <clears throat> oh, well, whatever. I'll leave the blur on. Okay. Um, I don't know what the rest of it is, and I don't care. I'm not going <laughs> to. As long as you can hear me. That, hear me? that is not the point. We are not on the telephone. We are doing a program which features our two spectacular voices. Okay. And, and people deeply care. You know, one of the problems with turning the blur on is it turns your, it, it makes your microphone go away, which carves a hole in your cheek. All right. Well, I don't know how to do it now. <laughs> mirror, mirror my video. You could get a, a green screen. I get chroma key us both. Well, I lost that. I don't know how to change this. You don't know how to turn it off. From the blur. You're, you're like that, that guy, that lawyer that ended up on a, uh, on a, uh, in a court hearing with the cat filter on and couldn't figure out how to turn it off. Well, there it is. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, anyway, we're back to this and that's, look what I got though. See if this works. Uh, wait, I gotta find it. Oh, okay. Does this Does work? This work? work? Can you oh, hear me? Can you yes, hear me? I hear echo. I have an I echo, have an echo, echo effect, effect on my, my uh, uh, little mixer here. I could leave it, could leave it, leave it. Because you used to use these in radio, it'd be like to make emphasis on like car ads, especially. Come in this week for for twenty percent at all. <laughs> all car, you know, whatever. Okay. I never. I'm testing. Now you can't hear it. But the audience can. What? I turned on my echo just to show that I have effects too. Oh, so just because I have it, you have to have it too. Well, yeah, and and, and, and Barbara, what am I? And and you'd have the echo as well. So I have been on a Facebook rant. I haven't been on a rant, but I'm just. Did you say rant? Hang on. Did you say rant? Yes. You said the magic word. You went out. I'm about to deep friend. In, in fact, this morning I was up and yeah, it was about three thirty or something, and I'd I'd done my uh, Wordle and Octurtle and Wordle sequence and Blossom and all my games, and um, I was feeling particularly emboldened because I hit Blossom Boss again. That's the, over three hundred points. What the hell so, is Blossom? I I I understand the concept behind this Wordle thing. I did it twice with Cindy. Helped her find Wordle's a word. Fun. And then you got to do um, Quirtle, which is four at once. And then you got to do Octurtle, which is eight. And then uh, after I do that, you, you go through Octurtle, Octurtle. Eight what? Eight, eight letters? One, eight little game boards that you fill out. Oh, they, okay, Wordle is one game board. Yeah, so this Octurtle is eight at a time. <laughs> and then uh, you could do Sequence. Are they interactive you, or are they all separate? Yeah, they all they all get the whatever letters you put in uh go they, into oh, all, they cascade. Uh, okay. Um, so you so you go through them and you gotta solve them all eventually. Sequence you have to solve them in order. Anyway. And then there's rescue where it gives Some you people like people have way too much time and not enough to do. Well at three thirty in the morning, what am I gonna do? Sleep. Um, oh that didn't happen. So then you go through um Blossom. Blossom is uh, basically, it gives you, was it 10 letters or something? And you have to use the center letter in every word you create. And then it highlights a letter and you get extra points the more times you use that letter in the word. And you try to make the longest word you can out of those letters. It's kind of, you know, kind of like Scrabble, but it's a circle thing. And then if you, um, you know, and then you get points for how many letters you used, how many times you used the highlighted letter. The center letter, you know, this and that, this and that. So there are people, and I'm not sure whether or not I count myself among them, that get riled when their Facebook friends post their Wordle score, but it doesn't have any letters in it. All all it is is bragging. Oh, I made it in two. I made it in three. Well, it doesn't have the letters because that would be that would be a, colored boxes. Yeah, that would be a, uh, a spoiler. Got one. Yeah. Because everybody gets the same wordle. 
every day. Right. Every day. Right. Like and so, did you know that anyway. the word audio is a bad word to start with? A U D. It shouldn't. A lot of be. people use audio. A lot of people use 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 a different version of pretty much those same because they got the same vowels. Because they got all the vowels in it. Yeah. I, I, but I, I sometimes either read a story or more likely heard a uh, podcast where they were talking about the best doing a a, a roundup of what words, what starter words yielded the most success. And, and the typical starter words did not. I don't remember which one did, but it, it didn't sound logical. I've used radio to moderate success. My, my starter word, which you can say because it's not a mantra, is but, B-E-A-U-T, because E is a very common letter in there. And then it gets A in there and U. Um, audio, yeah, radio and, and audio don't have an, a, uh, an E. Right. But you can add the E in the next guess or you can, you know, whatever. You know, and you don't have to have. The, you're never going to get into one unless your guess word, your starter word happens to be the word of the day. So nobody gets right, into but, one. But there are people who leave clues. You can get a clue if you want. <laughs> And I've gotten ones based on clues. I have a friend here that, um, Denise, um, Denise was a partner in crime. I'll tell you, did I tell you about that story about the Ovaltine? Anyway, not Denise, ringing a bell. Ovaltine escapade. Um, so Denise and I, whoever is up either the latest or the earliest and does Wordle first will post it on the other site and leave a clue word. And sometimes I get what she's saying. Like this morning, she left the clue Vesuvius. So, and I was working around Mount, but it was erupt. Sorry for ruining everybody's world uh, if you haven't done it yet. But, um, and then I'll leave one for her. And sometimes she gets it in one, sometimes we get it in three. Um, anyway, so sometimes I don't look at the clue. You know, it's, it's kind of, <laughs> but I'm in another uh, pack of people that we all post. Um, in comments as to how many we did it. And I, f I feel bad when I get it in one, cause I got Denise's clue. <laughs> and then I'm like, all right, you gotta know. I <laughs> Listen. To it. So I tried well, to she, do I mean, she knew, oh, she knew th that you could get it in one because you had the clue, but other people were going, how but she's not in that? The, she's not in the specific group. Anyway, enough about the portal portal. It's uh it's fun. It's just, it's a little, brain teaser thing so um because you got to do stuff like that to keep your mind active when you age right what do you do to keep your mind going podcasts podcasts yeah three of them a week which which reminds me you and i both used to do radio shows mm -hmm. would be every day all day every well, not all day but every day for for hours three four hours mm-hmm I can't imagine doing this every day. I, I would be so wrung out. But the, the shows that we did were, it's 59 degrees in Lake Havasu City, and now here's the Eagles. Yeah, so you had music and you had other things to fill it. Commercials and things. Up with it, yeah. But talk shows have producers, by the way, who feed you ideas and they go over <laughs> with ideas. And uh, yeah, it's yeah, not we, all. We don't, there's no, nobody out there <laughs> feeding us anything. But, no, but that's why it's great to have somebody to, to do this with. I, I've done solo talk shows, and it's hard. I used to do those, um, but they weren't supposed to be talk shows. The program directors would always go, "Quit talking so much between play, play more music." <laughs> yes, I got that too. Less chatter, more platter. <laughs> more music. So, um, which I would play if if I knew which songs were safe and weren't going to get us taken down. Yeah. Especially in Russia. Got to keep that Russia audience. It's big for us. You got to keep Vlad glad. Um, so, um, well, I was talking about the thing before we have to get to TikTok and how stupid that is. Uh, that whole thing to get rid of TikTok, and we all know what it is. It's not because Russia's stealing secrets and stuff. That's not it. 
tell you what that is in a minute, but um, I am really getting tired of people who back Donald Trump. And <laughs> I am starting to... You're going to be really, really tired. I am starting to, on Facebook, um, assign certain thoughts about people who, you know, who can put up with the misogyny, the lying, um, and the whole nine yards, just the whole carnival of things. And I'm really starting to evaluate whether I can have relationships with them anymore. So these are people, I, not just Facebook friends, but real friends Yeah, on Facebook. We're starting to question it. And this morning, I almost just got rid of them up and down on Facebook. <laughs> I'm really tired of their responses to some of the things I bring up. And I don't mind if somebody is going to challenge what I say or have another thought. But um, I'm just disappointed, I guess. I don't know. I'm disappointed. And I'm trying not to. to I'm trying to keep with the spirit of, You're looking at your phone. It's distracting you. I'm. Oh, uh, 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 well, that's funny. Um, no, I'll tell you. <laughs> I am. Um, so I'm getting real tired of that, and I'm having a hard time deciding um, with some people. Is do I keep this going, or do I think they're just they're not going to come around? I'm tired of talking to them, and I'm tired of getting the. We'll just have to agree to disagree. No, that's a wimp's way out of the discussion. You know, when you get into it and you don't have a way of coming back reasonably or logically to something, but we'll just agree to disagree. Well, that, I mean, that is something you can arrive at Save if you've that. both made your positions clear. Well, I guess what I'm trying to do is to trying to make sure that I'm not doing something because I believe my position is right and theirs is wrong even though factually it probably could be said to be that way, especially when you look at stuff like gas prices, the economy, you know, and the whole gas price thing, I, you know, everybody's sitting there going, well, you know, under Biden, the gas prices, they go like, well, first of all, he doesn't set the gas prices. Second of all, you know, then you go into your argument about, well, um, if we didn't import all this, and if we would drill, 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 we wouldn't have to import. Well, first of all, we have to import because the gas, the gas, the, the, the oil that we drill here that we refine into gasoline is uh, heavy sour crude. No, no, and, the, the oil that we, oh, no, the, the, the produce domestically light, is light sweet. We're light sweet crude. No, yeah. no, that, that's what we, you can drink it. You could drink a cup full of it. Yeah. In fact, that, that that's what's in this tumbler. This is a tumbler full of light, light sweet, sweet crude. crude oil right so out of the, the ground. Uh, we have a little pump in the backyard. So the oil that we need mm. for our refineries to make gasoline and jet fuel and things out of is heavy sour crude. Yeah. And we don't produce that. We don't pump that. And so where do we get most of our oil? Well, of course, we get it from the Middle East because we're, oh, no, wait. No, we get it from Canada. The majority of the oil that we import comes from Canada. Yeah. You know who's second? Mexico. You know who's next down the list? Well, then we get into the Middle East and the like. So that's not that hard to look up before you spout. Yeah. Plus, and, plus the United States is currently the world's leading domestic producer yeah. of crude oil. So this, this drill baby drill, Why? For what? What are we drilling for? I don't. So we can we're make drilling for votes. So we're drill, drill, baby, drill isn't going to change our need to import oil. It is going to give oil companies more oil to export and make money off of. So I guess that's what we're looking at. And no, so we're, we're looking at re electing Republicans. That's all it is. We're looking at electing Republicans. Won't change the price of gas at the stations. It's not going to change the price of groceries. Um, 
it's, uh, it, it's, but you know, if you're fed enough misinformation and you don't look it up on your own and you take it and you run with it, that's what happens. And a lot of it, the disinformation campaigns, yes, it's been proven that Russia mounts up. So if you want to believe Russia, that's fine. I don't think you want to believe Russia. And pretty not believable, but they banned us. <laughs> well, they don't believe they're believing Russia. Well, they don't believe it. And it's just, so I've been watching some of these videos of, of some of these guys that go out and do interviews with um, Republicans at uh, Trump campaigns and Jordan you know, ask, Yeah, ask them about stuff. The, yes, the Daily Show. Yeah, that's that's who it is. And there was this one woman on there that it was like um, she was going, well, everybody knows that Obama pulls all the strings. Uh, <laughs> everybody knows that. Yeah, everybody knows that. He sits in the basement and pulls the strings because he couldn't get a third term. So he's running everything from the basement. They're going like, so he's running down. On I do. Trump. I do want another Obama term. Well, I would love it. But the first name would be oh. Michelle. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you. <laughs> And if, in, in um, Barack, one, Barack would be, you know, he, he wouldn't be sitting in the guest house having no influence. Of course, he would be a major part of whatever that well, sure administration is, which is fine sure. with me. Yeah, but I think she would be. Yeah. Dream, Dream on, on Gary. Gary. Um, yeah. Ain't going to happen. So, so, so the, the thing, thing of it is this. The thing, thing of it is this. This woman was like, well, Biden's not president. Well, who is president? Well, Trump, Trump is still president. Trump is still president. Well, he, hell yeah. He won. It was a, so it was what, does it matter, what does it matter if Obama is pulling Biden strings if Biden isn't president? Silence. You know, and you, if Trump you, is still president, how can he run for another term? Because he would have well, finished and, and, his well, two terms. Yeah, we get to that. They said if, if Trump is still president, what does it matter that Obama is, is, Obiden, is Obama pulling his strings? No, he's pulling Biden's strings. Well, Biden's not president, so why does it matter? And then the thought has to kind of catch up, and you're just like, oh, I don't have a talking point for that one. Um, it, just, it drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. Absolutely crazy. It's driving Having you been, so crazy, no, you were bumping your desk in your camera. I'm we're, we're putting out. Um, At least you're not thumping the microphone. Did you get the stand? No. Okay. Well, you're not thumping today. So that's good. So we, because um, if you stop thumping and you stop bouncing your camera, I'm not going to have anything to complain about anymore. So we got, um, we got uh, as journalists for 50 years putting out information so that uh, people, you know, in the end, you go, you know, we told you so. If you just would have listened to us, it's frustrating. Yeah. But I'm retired from that now. So TikTok. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but but the point the the point of your retiring is, and doing a podcast is you can now come on the podcast and express your views, opinions, and uh, analysis of the world situation without having a boss. Well, you were the boss without without worrying about what anybody else thinks about it, based on your the job that you are trying to do and and the fundraising that you are trying to acquire. I think everybody now, thought now you can just pretty, sit here and do it, say whatever you want. People, people thought, thought it was pretty, pretty transparent, transparent on Facebook. Facebook. I, uh, I was only ever told to take one thing down. NPR told me to take one thing down. What did you say? Uh, I put up that picture of, um, the, so, so NPR had a minder following you. Uh, it was legal counsel, and it was, um, you know, that picture that showed, um, was it the inauguration, or what was it? There was that thing that the park was sparsely populated, but Trump's picture of it had it full. Yeah, you know, yeah. That, Every, yeah. Everybody so, remembers the, those back, way back to the beginning and, and that. And I put that up, and I said, is somebody lying here? And I was oh, that was bef yeah. before we were using the word lying. Lie. Yeah, in, but NPR started using mainstream it. media. Later. Yeah, NPR started using it several weeks later because um, it was obvious. So uh, I was told 
to take that down because we didn't use the term lie and because I was on the NPR board, I represented NPR to some people, even though I didn't, and the whole nine yards. So I took that down. You wanted to talk about TikTok. Yeah, so they, we got we got up on TikTok. Your thing works. Um, but now I'm Jay. And I'm Gary. And we're white and old. And we're rapid TikTok. Because we podcast bold. We talk for hours. And our shows are long. And we don't give a damn that you think that's wrong. If you think we lack focus. Because we rattle and stray. We can't remember what we're going to say. Say. <laughs> Wait, what's the next line? Uh, yeah, okay. That's just part of the charm of an old guy show. show. And there's just one more thing that we want you to know. No. Understand our show. Ain't nothing like this. This, this is just clickbait. Or maybe bait and switch. Yes. <laughs> it should be switch. But that wouldn't just go with it. That wouldn't rhyme. Let's go with it. We're running out of time. So we need this viral. Because we're not well known. known. And we'll keep on rapping to, to our, our microphone. microphone. <laughs> because there's. There's two would be poor. Uh, but would, then it would have to be knowns. Yeah, never mind. Shut up. Oh, no, you shut up. It's the Jay and Gary Show. Only on YouTube. <laughs> and podcasts. And Facebook. We should be on Facebook. We're not going to be on Facebook. Now maybe we should. We're going to be on TikTok. It's just, it's going to keep going. Man, that bass is pounding. It is pounding. It's good. <laughs> um, best line of the whole thing. No, you shut up. No, you shut up. Uh, we we were was, I I would uh, I would hasten to uh, uh, add reading a script. Yeah, we were, and Gary wrote the script. So yes. he's saying to I'm Gary, a, "I'm a genius." Shut up! Was Gary writing that and telling me to say that too? Yep. Not like I've never said that to him before. Nope. So, but, anyway, but my point is, well, we were reading a script. You can't tell we were reading a script because we because were so we're, professional. Yeah. We are, after all, professionals. Washed, so, up, washed up has been wannabe big time uh, broadcast professionals. And if anybody wants to offer us a job, saving your pathetic radio station someplace, it's going to cost you. Or driving it completely off the air. Well, but that like, too. Like now, and that's, you know, I credit us with forwarding the desire uh, for people to get rid of TikTok altogether because they're scared of us. Yeah, that's up up to 20 views right now. The um, Scared of us. Yeah, the thing uh, I was concerned about was it, it sat at one of you, me, for weeks after I put it up. And I'm going, what's the problem? Are we not, did I, did I not set some privacy thing or whatever? Oh, I watched it 19 times yesterday, so. So that's why it's at 20. Not much. I mean, I put a note on, on Facebook where we now have a group, by the way, we have a Facebook group. Yeah, I put a note there and said, uh, is anybody else seeing this? Cause it, you know, it, it's just a matter that TikTok did not promote it to anybody. You know, nobody was going to see it. Um, the TikTok. Yeah. Nobody was going to see it until TikTok told them about it. And TikTok told no one. It's like going to the Walmart, the yeah. Walmart. So the reason that they want to get rid of TikTok is not because of the whole Japanese secrets. Oh, look, our names. Um, all of that stuff. The reason they want to get rid of it is because young people can have a voice. They can think. They can share ideas. Can't have and that. That doesn't work with the... Um, whole concept of indoctrina indoctrination uh, into the um, uh, baby fundy voice thing. And also, um, people can make money off of it who have no business making money of <laughs> people. And that could be an entrepreneurial young person, person of color, older person who doesn't have the same opportunities Although, if they just pulled themselves up by their bootstraps, they would. But, it's sarcasm. I think that um, they want to silence those opportunities because they quash the opportunity. Because here, we have to preserve a subservient working class. We can't have 
people using this kind of technology to become entrepreneurial and make money because the and old by the way, we are making money hand over fist on this uh, so the social old media thing, YouTube, TikTok. No, I'm just I, Facebook. I don't even spend it all. So the um, the thing about uh, uh, preserving the working class is keeping them down, keeping the workers down so that you can control and and that's the whole thing how does it get such incredibly have, broad bipartisan support mine. why does it get such broad support and you know some of the politicians that are talking about getting rid of it are using it whether their campaigns are using it and they don't know or what but they're on it so i yeah. like, so politicians you know a lot of the argument about abortion and the like was, well, we're just doing what the people want. We're doing the will of the people. Well, no, if you look at any of the surveys, you'll find out on the abortion issue, you're not. And, um, yeah, well, let's see. The 10th Amendment says, this came off your Facebook page. 10th Amendment says that it has to go back to the states. Well, what about the 9th Amendment that basically says not everything has to go back to the states? And yeah, so, one of the people yeah. I dialogue with Facebook on, um, someone I've I, I actually haven't known them. They are they're the relative of a kid back when we were kids that I knew very well. And it was, it was their sibling. And I did not know them very well. I'm sure I met them a time or two. But, yeah. you know, those old connections made on Facebook. And they're very so, conservative. And so it's fun to dialogue back and forth with respect. And I had none. And, um, and, and their point at one point, I, I, I think – I think I started the thing with uh, something about oh help me out I'm I'm losing the entire thread of so you were talking about it was on your Facebook page yeah and she had commented something about the Tenth Amendment and that was uh, oh it was the Dobbs decision Dobbs decision yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think I think what I posted was um, oh god what did I post that's it's it's escaping me. But the point was, she 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 said that that the uh, the Supreme Court confirmed that that it was the Tenth Amendment, which was why which which is what allocates power to the states. That's not specifically allocated to the federal government in the Constitution. So the Supreme Court's Dobbs decision was based on that. The Supreme Court's Dobbs saying. decision never mentioned the Tenth Amendment. Right. 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 This, this was, was about your, uh, you were referring to the Triangle Talk Show that you did five years ago, right? Mm, I don't, I don't, talk Show podcast with a woman who predicted that Roe v. Wade would soon be overturned. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, it went through this thing and, um, uh, oh, I know who this is. Oh, wow. I didn't put it together. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Supreme Court put the issue where it should have been from the start back to the states. And you said because a woman's autonomy over her pub, her own body is different in one state. <laughs> yeah, versus another, another yeah. It's another. And, uh, this person said, no, SCOTUS sent it back to the states because of the 10th Amendment. You said Dobbs' decision doesn't mention the 10th Amendment. And I said, what about the 9th Amendment? And uh, then somebody said, sorry, I didn't want to disturb you. I don't know why you always appear in my recommended friends. Maybe it's because I'm about to move to the United States. I say hello to you and hope we can become friends. Yeah, that's one of those scam things. Do not answer those people. No, you know, but, you know, some of them are you know, pretty out there, and they're, they're in a lot of threads that I see. So anyway, that was I know who that person is. Well, I don't know that person, but I know the relative of you know, the family. Yeah. 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 Wow. That was a long time ago. Yep. Uh, teenage years. Mm hmm. Hanging out at White's Drug Store. I you never, I did never hung out there. I did not hang out at the sweet shop. And now we enter the phase of the program where Jay regresses to his childhood in Winnetka, Illinois. They had the best green rivers. Until I moved to the Quad Cities, green river soda was invented in Davenport, Iowa. Lagomarsinos is a... What, what is it? Is it a 7-Up 
No, it's a lemon lime, lime thing. It, it's like lime. I don't know what they put in it, but it's lime syrup. <laughs> um, anyway, but uh, they sold the the thing to a uh, bottler in Chicago. I don't know. Canfields makes it now. I think make fifty fifty, and a lot of the old names Canfield. But anyway, so uh, Green River was um, the best Green River I've ever had. Is from Laga Marcinos. Not just a um, bottled soda pop. Uh, well, it is, but it's a fountain drink too. You okay. Because like I can say, how could one be better than another? Well, because Lago Marcinos, you got to know. It's over 100 years old, and it's still there. And it's, you but know. making something out of a Green River soda? Well, you can get a Green River soda with a vanilla ice cream in it, and a Green River float. Or okay, you just like a Green River, River float. float. Right. Yeah, or you can just drink the Green River like you drink a Coke, whatever. And uh, but Lago Marcinos, the, the um, oh, God, I miss Lago Marcinos, and I've only <laughs> lived here a year yet. But it's um, and now we've reached the show, the part of the show where Jay is nostalgic about the Quad uh, Cities. Crazy! They make their own candy and this and that, and um, but uh, they have the little soda fountain in the back, and it's basically unchanged from you know our grandparents' day. <laughs> so they still make the the sodas and their own hot fudge, and so you go and you get. An egg salad sandwich, which is one of the best you've ever had. And then you get um, a Green River to go with it. And then you get a hot fudge sundae for dessert. And you're just like, oh. And, you know, that's why I'm diabetic. So <laughs> I love stuff like that. But I can't have it now. So yeah. I'm not, not diabetic, not pre-diabetic, just a little fatter than I ought to be, so. Yeah, I'm obese. I'm going to start laying off the cookies every night. I'm obese. Obese. Te technically, f f technically obese. Yeah, I'm obese by 30 pounds now, which is down from 50, 60 pounds obese. And now I'm only 30 pounds obese. How much do you weigh? 228.2 this morning. And you are six one, six two, six feet. Six feet. Right at six feet. Have, like you, have you have you shrunk? Because I've shrunk. I used to be five eleven and a half. I'm five ten now. You know, I don't know. I haven't been measured in a long time, so they don't. They just the they never measure you anymore. They used to do that in the doctor's office. But they did. I had that wellness exam. <laughs> yeah, and, and they measured my height seventy inches. You still so be 71 and a half, almost six feet, not quite. But well, you know, I thought you were more than an inch taller than me. I, I, you know, I always said six feet, so maybe it was six one. I don't, yeah. I don't know. But I, I, I peaked at 260. So I'm sitting at about 203 right now. And yeah, that's big, that's really heavy for me. 60. Yeah, and I'd like to get down there, but um, so. At Thanksgiving, I weighed 260 pounds. So I've lost 31.8 pounds since Thanksgiving. And, the, and this is it's just adjusting your own diet. Cutting out crap, walking. Yeah, I did Weight Watchers. I hit, I peaked out at about 220 at one point. Did you? And I did Weight Watchers for, for like eight months and got mm -hmm. down to 175. Wow. And that was and, great. And I maintained that for two years or so and then it started creeping back up. How did it start creeping back up? What did you do? Eating stuff. Not not doing the Weight Watchers is based on a lot of measurement every day. Mm -hmm. And I kind of stopped doing that, which meant I started eating more things than uh, I would I would supposed to be. I didn't feel horribly deprived on the Weight Watchers, but a little bit. And no question, I'm not even coming close to anything like that now. So <clears throat> following anything like that now. Well, well I used to, to um, you know, it was late night eating. It, it was stupid, stupid eating. eating. When you get tired and your filters go off and you think that a sleeve of Oreos is one. <laughs> That's 110 calories because two of them are 110 calories. So the whole sleeve, what could, what, what could that be? 120? 130. 
<laughs> yeah, I play those mind games with myself all the time. I know. So, you, you know, it's that kind of stuff. And it's like, yeah, I can have a four egg omelet. You know, it's, it's just like if I just cut in half what I ate, it's portion size. But it's also um, sugar, you know. Stop drinking Cokes and Green Rivers and stuff like that. And drink water instead. Fizzy water. So this is fizzy water. This happens to be um, Waterloo, lemon lime, fizzy water. I tried. As satisfying as soda pop to me, and I was a big soda pop person. But real sugared soda pop, not diet. You have oh. muted yourself. Um, you. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I've been a diet cola person for a long, long time, and it's supposedly not that good for you. So I, I tried diluting it. Well, I tried totally switching off to the um, flavored sparkling water, mm -hmm. where the flavor is a hint it of flavor. Hint. Yeah. Yeah. It's and, like uh, yeah. And mm, that didn't do it. And so I tried like a 50 50 mm -hmm. still didn't do it so i've given up on that back to well i drink green tea then yeah. too iced green tea iced coffee stuff, stuff like, like that, that but not soda pop. pop not a lot of milk but some milk um whole milk um so there's a lot of different a lot of difference in what i eat i always ate a lot of fruit and vegetables so that that wasn't the issue it was the peripherals that got me um yeah pretty much. And, uh, so I'm, I'm doing a lot better. I, I monitor my, let's see in the morning I weigh, I do my blood pressure and my blood sugar. So my blood sugar was 115 this morning, supposed to be under 120. So that's good. But as my doctor will remind me when I go and gloat about, see, I got it down to 115. He'll go, yeah, because you take, um, I can't remember what it is. I take twice a day. Uh, what is that stuff? Anyway, I take that twice a day, and I do my Manjuro shot once. I did my <laughs> shot this morning. So, oh, so yeah. your blood sugar is being artificially held yeah. down by drugs. So what would it be if I wasn't doing that? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so I'm not so taking I, anything for that. I, I've added a cholesterol because that was sitting a little high. Oh, I got the cholesterol. And, blood, okay. and, and I'm on yeah. multiple blood pressure medicines yeah i'm on one of those and i'm on a um yeah, we're getting old it's the aarp podcast yeah. welcome everybody to the aarp do i have an aarp nothing music? wrong with me that six pills every morning and four at night can't take care of and yeah. that's good because it was it was my last doctor before we moved from the quad cities i had this really great doctor and i've, I've got aarp music here oh um, This cracks me up. This is what's good. Blood pressure is rising right now. So speak. I'm just going to stop doing this. So um, if you keep doing that, I'm just going to stop. <laughs> and really, turn, it, turn it off. It's been nice getting to know you for these last, you know, know you better and everything and hang out and, with And now we're done. Because I won't stop playing the... Um, What's the name I of that song? It's a Steely Dan. Island Highway. Or Skyway. Skyway. So I was, um, so I'm getting back to, to, to where I should have been, but I was so far off the map. <laughs> My blood pressure, You every time I would go to... Um, you know, an appointment, they take my blood pressure for, for the labs. You know, I'd go in to get my blood draw for the labs, and they'd do my blood pressure, and she'd go, do you feel okay? i go, yeah. And she'd be like, okay. She'd go like, why? What is it? she go like, well, 175 over 110. <laughs> That's pretty high. And i go like, That's about what it is. So anyway, my, my doctor was really good. We got stuff within control and got stuff started. Anyway, the doctor I have now is pushing it even farther, and it's great. It was starting under the one in, in Rock Island, though. She was great. I think the line that she gave me one time was, there's nothing wrong with you that you can't fix. Now, you can do it one of two ways. You can fix it 
with a regular plan of diet and exercise and stress reduction and, you know, the whole nine yards. Or we can give you medication, but I'll guarantee you that you'll burn right through the medication. Hmm. Your readings will go back up and it won't be effective. And I said, well, what happens then? Well, then you die. (laughs) Oh, well, (laughs) then... Well, maybe let's try doing this organically with a little help. So I don't, my doses aren't huge. They're a little help um, until I get things under control. And I am. And that's thus the yoga, which I wasn't doing before. The walking every day, which I was walking about once a week, maybe. I used to count mowing the lawn as like five-mile walk. And so power, power more or a manual push more? Well, I mean, it's a power mower. It's not a lawn tractor. I, g- I gave uh, my son the, the push thing. I-, I couldn't use it up in Rock Island because the ground was too bumpy and the lawn was thick and it, w- it just wasn't working. It would work here, and I, I used it here, but then his he has a electric lawn mower and battery thing, and something's wrong with it, and he's trying to fix it. So I took that down. So anyway, did, you, did you have that. an electric lawn? Me no, because you were using an electric lawn mower. Shut up. I love the English language. It is, it is, it is, it is so messed up. Oh, oh it took me a while to get that too. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, so he's, he's got, got that, that now, and uh, you know, I got a third of an acre to mow here, up and down hill and stuff. So I, I will start getting back in shape with this. I'm looking forward to it, and, and I'm feeling better. And sleep is another thing, and I'm having issues with that because I'm still, you know, I wake up like I was having to get up and go to work at four in the morning or be at work at four. Yeah, you use our, a CPAP our, machine, right? Uh, so, yeah, and I've just started doing that. That's another episode, which which the name of which will be the continuous air positive C, air continuous pressure. positive air podcast. Yeah, there you go. So you can usually see within the first hour of me waking up, you can see where my straps go. And because uh, I got to wear not only this, I have the nose pillow thing, but I also have to wear a chin strap because I'm a mouth breather apparently at night. And I would a mouth breather during the day too. <laughs> uh, some say that. I would, I would go like that. And then all the air would come in my nose and go out my mouth. It wasn't helping anything. Yeah. Fortunately for me, I'm, I'm using the nose pillow because they're much more comfortable. But they, they are. Uh, my, I keep my mouth shut. <laughs> the only time I keep my mouth shut, it's at night when I'm asleep. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I had the full mask when I started, but uh, I couldn't do it. Okay. Um, it was like claustrophobic. The first, the first time I overfilled my reservoir with the the humidity reservoir with the nose pillows i waterboarded myself <laughs> that was not fun. Yep. so um yeah we could do a whole I'm, thing on once, and, once again um, i really need aarp music where have i what have i got here that might be aarp music? Know, like this is probably not I, aarp music yeah this is not aarp kind of a bad music on hold this is, what, this is what I put what I put behind the uh, rap thing that we did. It's just oh, got yeah. the super bass in it. All of our operators are busy assisting <laughs> other, but we value your call. Not enough to hire enough operators to handle the volume of calls we're getting. I, I engineered a, um, a a not music on hold, but a a thing on hold for Travelocity that we did with the uh, Roaming Gnome. The, uh-huh. the actor that played the roaming gnome and they had him re- a script for him to read and but, but we, before we did that <clears throat> i was suggesting we do something like this and this is my best impression of the roaming gnome hello there doesn't seem to be anybody here they said your call is important to us but i don't see anyone here hello hello is there anyone there is there anyone who could take this call we have a we have a customer making a call. Can anybody help this? There's no one here. I, I I don't know what to do. I I can't help you. I'm a gnome. I I I can't even move my arms. And they didn't want that. They didn't want that. Oh, I can't imagine. <laughs> Hello. 
Is there anyone here? Yeah. I like that. How's my gnome? Your gnome is pretty good, no, actually. You should have done the whole commercial by yourself. I was thinking if I, if, I, if I worked on it a little harder, if they could never get him for some time, I probably could have filled in. Did sub, he sub paid more him. than you? I'm sure. <laughs> I got paid very, very well. No complaints. But uh, you know, the I mean, best I'm sure thing he I got paid did. more than scale. The best thing I ever did. Hello. Was uh, I did a, tr a set of training videos. I voiced them for a friend of mine who had a production company and they were for, I don't know what they were. It was like quick trip or something, you know, one of these the convenience store things. And it was training for the managers on how to operate the store, how to, you know, do all this, how to hire people. It was a seven part series. And, um, I just did the narration tracks and there were other things edited in other people talking, you know, and, playing the part of slice of life and you know, this and that. So I was just doing the narration part. So I would have to do about 15, one sentence to two sentence, uh, recordings for each one of these. And so it would take me probably an hour to record them. And then to separate the tracks, another, 15 minutes and then burn them to a CD another 15 minutes and then drive them to federal express <laughs> another half hour. So I don't know what are we at an hour and a half or something? I got paid a thousand dollars for each one of these. So I was making like $900 an hour. That was pretty cool. I enjoyed that. Okay. Are you ready to get um, blown away? Uh, yeah. Recording the Travelocity voiceovers. Yeah. For the radio commercial. Yeah. Took me 30 minutes or so. Yeah. $1,800. And if they ran it past 13 weeks, I got another $1,800. That's 36, 46, $5,400. The, the, T, the TV commercials? Oh, I don't even want to hear this. First of all, it was $1,800 just to record it. Yeah. And then if they made it to the air, it was a, another couple of thousand dollars. And then if it made it past 13 weeks, a whole thing again. Wow. And that was union scale. That was just union scale. 10 years ago. Yep. 2007 or so. Wow. Well, that's bought awesome. me a car, bought me a, put, put in a 401k. And of course, two years later, it became a 201k. A 201k. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the dot com bust of 2010. Oh. Yeah, you know, I, I'm having a little trouble I'm with still my, driving that car. <laughs> I, I'm trying to figure out how the stock market keeps going up to records, but I'm in the negative territory. I don't I, I, I don't know what they're invested in. In you got like a mutual fund? It's T I A A. The teachers thingy. Don't know. And um so I'm in the not in the rapid growth. I'm in the mixture of safe and stick your toe in the water a little bit. But, you know, la the month of January, my earnings were minus 0.2%. And the stock market was hitting new records. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> Who's but running this? Putting your money in all those uh, environmental funds. Well, you know, the, the point of it is I could withdraw it all and put it in a savings account for 5%. Where did you get but, a 5% savings account? Oh, you can get Ally Bank has them right now. A, that's a promotional rate. Online. So? For five minutes. Well, good. And then go to another one for five minutes. But you can get CDs. Get CDs. CDs are 4.755%. I have if an I-bond. Oh, those are good. Too, if you bought them at the high interest rate, yes, which I did. It's yeah, not, it's not earning that now, but it did for a, a year. Yeah. So, but but the the point of it is that you can beat minus point two percent in a bank account, even if it's a two percent bank account. I haven't looked at. It. <clears throat> I bought index fund stocks. I haven't looked at what they're yeah. doing, but if they're tracking the stock market, they should be doing okay. They should be doing good. So, I mean, over the past year, though the the year. 2023, um, they actually, the, the rate of return was actually 8.7%. So 
a okay. month. What are you complaining about? Well, and that, you know, because it's, you know, what I live partially off of. So anyway, I'd like it to last a while because, you know, doing all this healthy stuff means I'll probably outlive it at the rate I'm drawing from it, which is fine because I got other stuff. And so, so meanwhile, back at uh, Fundy Baby Voice. Fundy Baby Voice. <laughs> Fundy baby fundy, voice. Fundy baby right. voice. There, there's uh, a there's a Anna Gasteyer's uh, NPR sweaty balls thing. She talks in that voice. Yeah, there's a, there's a, uh, a a parallel track. It's not a fundamentalist voice, and we're and we're I mean we're trashing on women here because women seem to be the predominant um, people who fall into this trap. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's, just, the, it's the sexy baby voice. And um, I have <clears throat> something that I hope won't get us taken down here. Um, let's see if we get ready to to play this. Uh, Not Stormy see. Daniels, is it? No. It's a broad new world. <laughs> this is from a movie called In a World. All right, so I, I shared that with all of you guys because I just... I wanted to. That is Lake remind Bell, you why you're all here actress, today. voiceover artist. I guess let's start with Stacy. Um, Stacy, what do you do for a living? I'm a corporate attorney. Great. And I know you've been on a job hunt. How's that going for you? Well, um, I've been interviewing for about 10 months. And why do you think that is? Because I sound like a sexy baby. Which may be great for the bedroom. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but. But am I really going to hire a sexy baby to defend me in a patent infringement lawsuit? Nope. That's the tail end of the movie called um, <clears throat> In a World. In a World. Have you, have you ever no, run across that does. movie? No, but a friend of mine does those uh, movie trailers now. You know, the In a World guy died. Don LaFontaine, yeah. Yeah, a friend of mine does a lot of those now. <clears throat> um, in a world, <laughs> yeah. Well, th that's what that movie is 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 all about. This was just uh, kind of tacked onto the end because it was kind of a Lake Bell mm -hmm. uh, thing that she wants. She was kind of fighting against the sexy baby voice thing. Um, the movie was Absolutely. produced shortly after Don LaFontaine died, okay. and it's all about <clears throat> all of the voiceover actors in the Los Angeles area trying to vie for becoming his successor. I got it. <clears throat> so it's a lot about the neurotic, egocentric world of high-paid voiceover actors. So the guy that uh, that I know that does this, he does a lot of these voiceovers, Russell Mania, stuff like that. And um, I don't think he does movie trailers, though, but he does a lot of these, you know, the big voice things. Um, has his own production studio, but he owns a small radio station too. <clears throat> and it's a small radio station in a small town. And it's a good radio station <laughs> when they're not, when he doesn't have nut cases on. <laughs> uh, but uh, by, the, by the way, if you're looking for some morning guys to save your radio station, no, he's got who, who's on his station? I don't know. Well, he does want me to do a show for him. We've talked about that. I said, when I retire, let's get together. We have retired. So we get there. I can do it. Anyway, I don't know what I would do. I'd have to, yeah, maybe uh, I would. I would to. propose a two-man show. No. And I have what? a name for it. Yeah. What, Jay and Gary show. What, yeah. What is, the, what is the name for it? The? The Jay and Gary show. <laughs> Jay and Gary show. <laughs> Which I, for, I forgot to stick in there. So. Before, right. when, when we did our show intro. So he does the imaging for a station. That's the station IDs and promotional announcements and mm -hmm. sports intros and stuff. And he does it in his big production voice. <laughs> it's so, it sounds so good because it's really well done. But in that market and at that size station, it's just so out, <laughs> out, of, out of character. It's it's great. I love it. The stuff he does is so good. And he does, you know, commercials for his station and stuff like that. Okay, here's uh, here's my here's my shot at in a world. 
In a world where DXers battle to work them all, one tiny island slowly rose to the top of the most needed list. Navassa. In January 2015, 15 aging radio amateurs, or er, 15 seasoned DX professionals, set out by sea and by air to spend two weeks putting the island back on the air and in your logs. Sugar Victor 1, Romeo Kilowatt 59. K1N, Kilo 1, Nevada. They survived on the most basic food, endured primitive conditions, and a hostile environment. Also, you could make that one coveted contact. Whiskey 8 Bravo India 59. On every band and mode, plus a safety contact just in case. Now you can experience this epic DX adventure. Bob Alfin presents K1N Navassa the movie. Uh, er, er, the DVD. Available at many fine amateur radio retail establishments or direct at NavassaDX.com. Order yours today. I love it. No red boobies were harmed in making this movie. I love that. Yeah, I, 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 I do not have the voice to, to be the big movie trailer guy, but I come close. You can be the little movie trailer guy. <laughs> yeah. In a world. No, instead of in a world, in a continent. On an island. Oh. On in an the island. middle of the Caribbean. In the middle of the Caribbean. 16 aging radio amateurs. Yeah, I <clears throat> did the voiceover for that, for that uh, DVD at the time. It's on, on YouTube mm. now if you want to watch it. Called K one N Navassa. K one N Navassa. As I, I um edited the program and did the voiceover for it. And then I did that trailer and the producer, the guy that um that contracted me to do the editing and all and uh, and all that saw that 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 um trailer and thought, no, <laughs> no, no way. And Fortunately, he showed it to a couple other people who said, "Oh, you got to use that. That is great." It was, it's once again, it's it's one of those cases of people that go, "I I don't have the imagination to uh, see that that is awesome." It is awesome. I, th I thought it was. Um, and there were a few people that said, oh, "I'm not going to watch that show if the guy sounds like that all the time." You idiot! Have you ever seen a movie trailer? Does the movie sound like the trailer all the way through? No, you idiot, it doesn't. I'm not going to watch a show like that if it sounds like that all the way through. You know what? Defriend them. <laughs> so um, why did I get into radio? You know, we covered that one time. Um, and I just happened on this because um, the state, my old station WVIK is looking for a news director. And so I was Googling around to see what they were going to pay and stuff like that. Not that I was going to do it. But, now, this was before you um, went to work there? No, this is now. Oh, now. The news director. <laughs> you don't want to go back to work at, as a news director of a station you used to be CEO of. Right. The news director just uh, retired recently, and so did the news assistant news director. And so, so, wow, they had a major set of retirements in the past year. Yeah, and me, and <laughs> it was like, well, the news director had made me a promise not to retire until after I retired. So he he did. and uh, But then the assistant news director up and retired, and so they're, you know, they, but they're, they're advertising for the news director now. When you work at an educational institution, sometimes the wheels of hiring turn slowly. <laughs> so they're, they're getting to hire the news director now. And it's not quite a year since they've had one, but uh, they've had a very capable person uh, at the helm of the news department. So not worried about that. But anyway, the long and short of it. There you go. Oh, drink. Everybody drink. Is that as I was looking through things, I was looking to see who has been handling the news and it was who I thought it was. And I happened upon 
my updated presence on their website. You know, it's like Wikipedia. It changes from J. Pierce is the general manager and CEO as to J. Pierce was the general manager and CEO. <laughs> which, which is, I mean, th nothing unusual about that, th do they? But, but, but I read through it again, and uh, uh, you should read it. Okay, WVIK. So you look up WVIK staff. Just Google WVIK staff. I think that's where it was. I don't run it. I'm I'm sitting too far away from the from the. Um, let's see. All, I got all people. Quad cities. Yeah, all people. Go to all people. Uh, I keep going down. Former people. Where is former people? I don't know. Because you're not in the all people. I know. I just looked at that. Uh, so, so where should I be looking? Maybe you have to put in um, J. Pierce WBIK radio, something like that. I'll try that. But that would really have you hidden. You know, it may not be live anymore on it, but... Oh, it, it doesn't say was. It was it was retired former CEO general manager. Yeah, there I am. Look at how nice I look. <laughs> Turn your head uh, around. Turn your head. Nice. Let's see the bun. Oh, wait a minute. I got to put your picture on the on the screen, and people are going to see that. There you go. You went to wild professor professor mode. So when I was working there, I looked really, you know, look at that. Yeah, you, you tried to, um, tried to clean up. So read on down. Jay Pierce became the station's general manager. And yeah, I make this uh, maybe bigger eyes it here. Keep going. A down. Detroit native, Pierce grew up in the Chicago suburb of Winnetka, and received a Bachelor of Science degree in Communications and Fine Arts from Southern Illinois University, Carbondale, Illinois. He's worked at radio stations up and down Illinois as well as in Missouri. Wait a minute, Where, where'd it go? Did I miss a more? It's up above that. That's all there is. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. This is it. This is all you got left. Where's the part? Just leave they, they need to update that you're probably not on the boards of the Quad Cities Rotary Club anymore. Are you oh. st are you still maintaining those positions back in no, Quad no. Cities? Yeah. Just no, no, one thing. Well, where, where was that thing that? Uh, it must have been in an article. Uh, yeah, well, I wasn't that. Anyway, that was fun. I don't know where it went. So, what did it say? What are we going? What are we getting at here? It said that Jay Pierce got into radio almost fifty years ago because he wanted to be like his big brother. Oh, I want to see that. I know. That's why I wanted to find it. Jay Pierce got into radio after sitting at the knee of Marconi. And saying, you know, I think you got something here, Mark. Something like that. He's anxious to spend more time with his grandkids. <laughs> Jared Johnson will do a good job. I don't know. Anyways, uh, yeah, it's there somewhere. So I'll find it and send it to you. I can't remember what, what it was. I was looking at it. Jade retired, Pierce retiring, reception, ship change. And uh, Pierce has announced a second signal series. EEO. I don't know, whatever. WVIK names Jay Pierce as new manager. Jay Pierce glad to be a friend of WVIK. Yada, yada, yada. Pierce on his retirement in public broadcasting. Kip. WBIK. This is the uh, legislation that was passed recognizing me in my career. Do you know about that? They passed yeah. legislation? Oh, yeah. The Illinois yeah. General Assembly? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm I don't know where it is. It's There's a lot of these things. but I, I have it somewhere. I have it written out somewhere. 
got it arranged somewhere. It's going to go up on the wall when I unpack stuff. It's, you know, it's actually like a, a spill. Let's see, something from someplace called current.org, whatever that is. The uh, public radio industry and television industry. Uh, oh, there's a general assembly bill. Yeah, that's it. Is that it? For me? I don't know, whatever. Yeah, congrats, Jay Pierce. Yeah. Uh, where can I find the text? Full text. Whereas, whereas, the members of the Illinois House of Representatives wish to congratulate J.H. Pierce on the occasion of his retirement from public broadcasting Illinois. And whereas, J. Pierce has worked in radio and television broadcast for almost 50 years. Spanning stations, in, I'm getting into my Rush Limbaugh, spanning no. stations in Texas, Missouri, and Illinois, he has worked with public broadcasting stations for more than half his career, with half his brain tied behind his back, just to make it fair. Whereas, for, for the last 11 years, Jay Pierce has served as CEO, general manager, and on-air host, and chief cook and bottle washer at WVIK at Augustana College. And they whereas... satellite dish in the winter. <laughs> snow. And, and, and shoveled snow off the satellite dish in the wintertime. And whereas, during his time at WVIK, Jay Pierce ran the station completely into the ground, losing almost all community support by partnering with local businesses on numerous projects, expanding programming, and serving as an advocate for local news, arts, and entertainment. And whereas, Jay Pierce has also worked to ensure that WVIK is situated to face the difficulties of a new era by adapting the station's portfolio for the digital age, which was further highlighted when a station-produced podcast reached Number two, oh, you're number two, you're number two in the national podcast ranking. There's about 50 more we add whereas this year. Oh, there's a lot of whereas this. Resolved. This is, this is like, now be it resolved. By the House of Representatives of the 102nd General Assembly of the State of Illinois, that we congratulate J. H. Pierce, J. Hussein Pierce, on the occasion of. Actually. <laughs> Hector J. Insane Pierce on the occasion of his retirement in public broadcasting from WVIK commend his long career in public broadcasting and hope that he is never heard on another radio station again. Insane in the membrane. A suitable Insane. copy of this resolution will be presented to Jay Pierce as an expression of our esteem and respect. It was uh, introduced by then Representative Mike Halpin, who is now a senator, state senator Mike Halpin. Working his way up. Wonderful, Wonderful guy. He is one of those politicians that I think of when I am critical of politics and politicians. Some of them, not all of them. And I always think of him because I I want to make sure I'm not including him. <laughs> there are a few others, too. There's a few good ones. Yeah. So is he a, uh, a viewer slash listener of the Jay and Gary show? I don't know. I would be afraid to recommend it to him. He'd probably laugh. See, that's the point. We're afraid to recommend this to anybody, and you, a loyal listener slash viewer, should also be afraid to recommend it to your friends because they will judge you harshly. Well, Senator Halpin and I are Facebook friends, so he's probably been exposed to the fact that this exists. Maybe you're not Facebook friends anymore. There's really no way to tell. Yeah, I can go with Anyway, that's true. Um, check, check it out. <clears throat> See, he's a good friend of public <laughs> broadcasting in the state and WVIK. He's a really, really. Did, did he represent that area? District. Yeah, he represented the Quad Cities area and just a great advocate for the Quad Cities. Wonderful family man. He's just, you know, just a good egg all the way around. Yeah, that's all. He's the the kind of politician that, in another few years you will discover has been wrapped up in some incredibly insane scandal, probably a sex scandal, maybe a few more. And you'll, and you'll be the guy that comes on the, on the uh, interview on the TV station. This is, I had no, no idea. I had no I, idea. I, he, he was I, never anything like that. When I knew him, I can assure you that ain't going to happen. <laughs> so I remember back when Paul Simon, ran they all say. and I knew Paul Simon 
Uh, and I, I loved him in, in the, you know, with that other guy that he sang with. Yeah. Right. He said, uh, yeah, he did the Saturday night live where he goes, I'm not that Paul Simon. <laughs> when anyway, I was just he, a was, he was a wonderful politician. I wish he could have been president, but, um, he, um, announced he was running for president and I was the news director at WSIU at SIU at Carbondale. He was, you know, from down there. And, um, so he had been the Senator, been a rep state rep before that. And people were calling, looking for dirt on him. <laughs> say. And I would have these conversations and they go like, well, there's gotta be something, you know, he has, uh, and an interest in a nursing home in Troy that's been cited for a violation of some sort. You know, I'm like, yeah, well, you know what? That they, they may be an investment or some. I don't even know what it what it could be. But he doesn't run the nursing home. I don't know if he's ever been there. It's not like he owns the nursing home. And nursing homes have violations all the time. What are you looking for? Is that what's going to bring him down? <laughs> <You know? laughs> People could not believe he was that squeaky clean. They just could not believe it. So they were calling, trying to make something of nothing. Yeah, but fortunately he was he was around before there were things like uh, Twitter. Yeah. Well, he drove a 1962 Rambler American, for God's sake. How much trouble is he going to cause? Because yeah. what, what's his name? Anthony Weiner? Yeah. Everybody thought he was pretty squeaky clean until pictures of his crotch appeared. Well, I know, but there's no pictures. Of we, we, and, that we know of. There's worse pictures <laughs> of me out there, if you know. <laughs> that, that, that we know of. You know what the music means? Are we done? I believe we're done. I'm out of gas. You got any more? I mean, I got tons more, but I don't want to start up. No, start we have into them at uh, the two hour on point. Yeah. yeah. And wrap on the list. So, um, this has been the Jay and Gary show. Oh, wait a minute. I got this thing here from the studio, et cetera, et cetera. The Jay and Gary show. You I can't am believe it. somebody <laughs> actually, somebody actually said, you know, the difference between yours and a lot of other podcasts is you have that really cool graphic. You guys are. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I spent I tens brothers, of thousands you know, of dollars on a, on a production company making that graphic. My brother's a, a professional uh, Yeah. Oh, here's where the problem is with, with the echo cancellation and stuff, is that if I got the music playing, we can't hear you. Oh, you can't hear me? Well, you got to you gotta step it up a little bit. But yeah, because anything coming down the pipe going toward you turns you off or turns you down. And until you turn off all of that Zoom process. I have to turn it off? Can you you have to turn it off. Now? Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, I'm gonna, gonna have, have to look this up. up. Absolutely, there's I'm there's like, a, about twenty different settings that you have to turn off and make them all go away. Okay, so what what did I have here? Um, Grandpa was a Nazi. I thought I I thought I oh I have our, I have our names here, but it's not not some place where I can easily push a button. Well, that's the part of the music I don't like. I'm going to start the music over because <laughs> I don't like that part. I'm, I'm Gary. And, and now you say, and you're Jay. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's studying his zoom settings. Ooh. He's trying to figure out how to turn all that. Zoom. That, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yes. Echo cancellation. Off. Echo. Well, it, it only gives me auto and aggressive. I, we need to we need to solve this once I stop recording. Signal, Signal processing, processing by Windows, Windows device, device drivers, drivers auto on off. Windows, Windows raw. raw. We'll check this out in just a minute. We will see you whenever we decide to do another show. Apparently, we're in the uh, weekly category just about. Oh, and, and this is show number six. Got one more to go to cross the threshold of how many shows people typically give up the ghost on when trying to do a podcast. So, got one more. What are you doing? 
I don't know. I was trying to make a monocle out of a turkey. Out of a what? Hair thing. <laughs> but you're very handy to, you know, it's like... Oh, it's a, a hair thing. Gucky says... There's, there's a, another podcast I listen to, a couple of local guys that used to be on the radio stations around here. Um, so it's the bad part again, starting over. Um, and they got, they got fired from their last job at WBT... In Charlotte, big fifty thousand watt, but directional Friend radio of mine station. Station, yeah. And they so they got fired from that, and they started a podcast. Like I say, the refuge, the last refuge of washed up wannabe podcasters and broadcasters. Um, and they don't end their show; they they just cut it off at some point and stop. We could do that. Well, we could. I, I mean, I'd be copying them. I, I would prefer to actually end a show, but I can't seem to get you to end it. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. We'll see you whenever we do another show. I'm Gary. I'm, I'm Jay. Jay. Over. And, and out. out.